Hello and welcome to Learn ADS in 5 Minutes. This is tutorial 40 on a very interesting topic of using EM circuit excitation. And I'm going to take a case study of a polarization switching antenna. And it's a shipping example along with ADS for many years. So you would be able to try it out on your own PC by following this video. Now what you will learn in next few minutes how to set up EM circuit excitation in ADS. And here in this example, we have this uh, dual dipole kind of antenna. And in order to model the switch, I have a couple of diodes here. And depending upon which diode we pick, one of those two dipoles uh, will get into action and we would be able to see the corresponding radiation field uh, coming out of our antenna structure. Now, the important part of this whole uh, modeling exercise is also to use diode. So I will also cover how to do diode modeling in ADS, including die model, package model, and then eventually using it in our simulation. And finally, we'll be doing this kind of you know, design analysis. All right, so hopefully exciting enough topic for you guys to stay tuned till the end of the video and um, you know, follow each of the steps which I'm going to demonstrate. Now, before we get started, subscribe to my channel. If you already subscribed, click on the bell icon to enable all the notification. Don't forget to hit the like button after you watch the video and click on share button to share with your friends and colleagues and post the link in various forums you might be member of. All right, so let's get started one by one and walk, us, uh, walk our way through. Now, before we start, I just want to show you what eventually you will be able to see so here is the antenna radiation pattern when one of the dipoles are active, which you can see in my case. And notice there are you know, plenty of gaps here in our layout. And that's where usually we, we mount our transistors or diodes or the bought over switches from various companies along with the inductor capacitor or resistors. In a traditional EM simulation, it's not possible to see the overall loaded performance of your layout as if you are doing a lab testing with all these component mounted, which we are going to see in this tutorial. And while one dipole is working and you can see the radiation pattern and, and the relevant characteristics, we can very quickly switch to another you know, diode and thereby we switch the, the dipole for radiation and you can see the corresponding change. So this makes it very interesting because not only you are able to simulate your complete antenna system along with the switch or, or any of the discrete network you have, you know, integrated insights such as rectina or, or a smart antenna geometry, but you would be able to, if you don't want to see the impact of those, you know, lumped elements, you can, you know, switch back to a traditional way of looking at the, and the antenna radiation pattern the way you want or in any at a specific frequency you may be interested to working on. All right, so with this introduction, let's go ahead and do step-by-step -step approach on how can you get access to all this. So first of all, so this is the example which I'm working as I said, this is a shipping example in ADS. So in order to get to this example, you can click on this example search icon and here, just type in excitation. And when you type excitation, you get uh, you know this example here. Click on this example name, and now you can just simply follow the wizard and go and and unzip this example. Once you unzip, you will see some structure like this, and you will see one readme file which will come up, and it will give you instruction on how to enable the EM circuit excitation menu bar which you see here on the top of my screen, EM circuit excitation. And basically we just go to tools app manager and then we enable that, you know, uh, custom add-on. So here, if you go to tools app manager and then click on EM circuit excitation, make sure it is enabled. And once you close, it will ask you to restart ADS. And once you restart ADS, you open the same workspace which you just opened and now you will have this structure. Now, along with this default files, which you get these four folders, I also created one you know, schematic to show you how can we run diode IV characteristic simulation. So before we get down here, let's look at what designs we have. 
under uh, this fourth folder of dual dipole, I do have a test bench AC, which is basically the schematic where we have, you know, this EM component placed. And in the EM component placement, uh, we do have this lumped component, you know, which we have assembled, including the diode and the resistor and the capacitor, which is basically for impedance matching. And this will perform the switching action. And we do have horizontal dipole, which will get activated once this diode gets forward biased. And we do have vertical polarization dipole you know, dipole antenna, which will get activated once this diode is forward bias. Now at the bottom here, we can notice we have a parameter sweep and we are sweeping a variable called polarization control. And basically we are going to switch between zero and one. And once we define the polarization control to be zero, the V control voltage, which is basically this DC voltage, uh, will either turn to plus 5 volt or minus 5 volt. When it turns plus 5 volt, at the diode, which is connected here with the P-terminal on this feed line, will get forward bias, and you will have the horizontal polarization dipole to be active. And when the voltage, DC voltage is minus 5 volt, then this diode will get forward bias because you can see is the negative end terminal connected to the feed line and then the vertical polarization diode will be you know active so that's for the dc control now for rf uh, you know power feeding and rf frequency we also have set up p1 tone and this is the same source which i described in the harmonic balance tutorial and if you haven't watched the tutorial you can go ahead and watch it first so using p1 tone source we are feeding 2.45 gigahertz frequency and we are going to feed 0 dBm as the input power to our antenna structure. And at the bottom here, we do have an AC uh, simulation setup. And we have set it up for one frequency, 2.45 gigahertz, because our design frequency for this dipole system is 2.45. But if you are working on a multi-band antenna where your, your one antenna could be let's say 2.45 gigahertz, another antenna could be five gigahertz. You can set up your analysis according to that. And based on what um, you know, control you pick um, from this diode or the switches, uh, then you would be able to see the, the radiation pattern even with dual band antenna you know, kind of systems. So this concept is pretty generic, pretty universal. Now, once we have this structure, the EM component for this antenna, is basically coming out from this design. And that design is under dual dipole. And you can see you have a layout. Once you open the layout, you have this kind of a structure. And just to look at this stack up, we have a two layer stack up for this antenna on IFR4 1.6 mm you know, thick substrate. We have con layer, which is the top layer, and then con two layer, which is my bottom layer. And these two layers get, can get connected by this via layer of hole. And that's what been used in this uh, layout. So if you just press three to launch a 3D view, you can see this brown color, which are basically the con, is where I'm going to excite this structure. That's the plus point. And at this point, at this junction here, we will have you know one diode connected between these two nodes, another diode connected between these two nodes, and so on. And rest of the elements are for impedance matching, as we talked about. Now, how to set up the ports, how to make plus and minus pairing. I have already covered all those things in the previous videos, so feel free to explore earlier videos on momentum and FEM simulation. And once you set it up, you can you know, invoke the EM simulator. Set up the simulation, make sure you create an EM model. And while creating EM model, make sure you uncheck the decrease size option. Because if this is enabled, then you're only computing S parameter data. You're not storing the far field, which you eventually need. So make sure this data is unchecked so that you include the field information along in the EM model, along with the frequency response. So you can go ahead and set up your frequency sweep. So here, as you can see, because we have to pass DC, and this is a very important point to remember, Remember this input node, we are passing a DC control voltage. And when the DC has to go through this antenna structure for the diode biasing, 
or you might be using even the transistors so for transistor biasing. Make sure the EM model does start from zero gigahertz, otherwise it will not let the DC pass. Your diodes or transistors cannot get bias. Very, very important point to remember. So I'm doing a wide frequency sweep uh, from zero to three gigahertz, but I do add uh, you know, a specific frequency point of 2.45 gigahertz because that's eventually where I would like to you know, plot my far field, seeing diode and capacitor and resistors in action. Now, if you're using transistors um, as a switch here, and if you may be interested in, you know, looking at, a, you know, antenna far field at second harmonic, third harmonic, fourth harmonic. So make sure your EM model does contain the frequency range of those harmonics. Otherwise, when you feed it from your circuit simulation, you know, that current or that frequency content is not there in the EM model. Then you can't eventually see the proper far field coming out of your EM structure. So very, very simple things to remember. What eventually you want to see should be there in the EM model, whether it is DC point, whether it is your actual RF point or the harmonic frequencies. Now, once you do this setup, you go ahead and run simulation. And then when you go back to ADS main window, you will have the EM model, which will get generated, which basically contains the result of this structure along with the far field. And if you double click on the EM model, it shows you what uh, you know simulator has been used up to what frequency range uh, you have extracted the data. And inside database, you do have a corresponding data pattern. All right, so once these basic things are set up, we can go back to our test bench uh, AC simulation setup, activate EM circuit excitation. And once this window pops up here, you can run DC, AC, harmonic balance, transient. So all these simulators are supported. That means no matter what configuration of antenna system you are working with, whether you want to run a linear simulation, non-linear simulation, all of them are supported here. In our case, we just we are running an AC simulation. So we go ahead and click run. And this simulation here, basically when it finishes, uh, it will compute excitation at every node you have. So wherever you have these lumped elements, it has already computed due to this circuit simulation, all the voltages and currents and the phase information. Phase is very, very important information here. So now it has all the excitation nodes and all the excitation information in the database. Now, once that is connected, if you just want to see current visualization, you can click on this option. And then on the frequency at which you are simulating, you should be able to see how you know, currents are distributed across the structure on that particular frequency. However, we just don't want to see that. We also would like to see far field pattern. So we make sure we select this option and then hit this button here, start visualization. The first thing ADS will do is to inform you that while your EM simulation contained all these frequency points, however, in your circuit simulation, which you just did by clicking on this icon, you only did it at 2.45 gigahertz. So when you try to see the circuit loaded EM far field, these frequencies cannot show you that result. And which is a bit obvious because we haven't run circuit simulation on these frequencies. So that's fine. And you will notice 2.45 gigahertz will not appear here because that's where we are running circuit simulation and also EM simulation. So both of them are pretty good. So once we click OK, now the far field viewer or the field viewer will open up. And I already covered, um, you know, these, uh, you know, capability of this viewer window in the previous tutorials. However, in this tutorial, we will do something extra which we haven't done till now. And that is to look at the loaded, you know, layout circuit performance um, to see the far field in presence of these SMT or diode and, and transistor components. Now, once the first cut window opens up, you have the traditional, you know, window where you have the frequencies. And from here, uh, I know the, the valid frequency is 2.45. Now, once I select any of these frequencies, because I am looking natively currently only for the layout performance, I'm able to see the far field as well as the current here. And if I go and animate this current, 
and reduce this uh, gradient level a little bit, I could see the feed point getting excited. This is the port one, which is getting excited. However, uh, at this point, it kinds of breaks because that's where you have one diode connected. And here you have another diode and rest of the, the capacitor and resistor components. And the native layout does not have that information. So this information is incomplete. However, you can see the far field pattern. And again, changing the, the various frequencies, you can see the far field changes. And now I can go to far field window. I can switch on antenna parameter. I can see the overall gain you know, from this geometry, which is around 3.86 dBi. But I really don't know how is this diode behaving, uh, which antenna eventually is, is behaving, and I don't have any option to choose one of these two antennas because either I would work in horizontal polarization or vertical polarization, and this doesn't give me any choice to do so. And that's what we do with, with EM circuit excitation. Now, to work with EM circuit excitation or to bring in all the SMT components behavior into this layout. Uh, from the port setup, we will change the mode to extracted excitation. And once we do that, now we can see polarization control of zero and one. Now under this mode, if I select any other frequency, you can see you will not have the far field because remember we have done a schematic simulation only at one frequency. So under this mode, you could only see results at one frequency. If we would have done you know, schematic simulation for all the frequencies, we will have all the data here. But right now, we just wanted to see at 2.45 gigahertz. Now, with 2.45 gigahertz and polarization control set to zero, you can see now the diode, the resistor, the capacitor, all that now is included in your layout. And it is as if you have an actual PCB and you are testing it in lab and you are plotting the results. So now this is an overall integrated PCB or antenna system performance, including all the discrete components we have. So currently we do have our horizontal dipole active and you can see the response. So let me try to place it side by side a little bit. And you can see the first dipole here is giving you gain of 1.2 dBi. And this is the radiation pattern. Now, if I go and switch the control to one, what you will notice now the radiation pattern changes and this dipole becomes active, which is basically our vertical polarization dipole. And now the gain also changes to 2.56. Isn't this very interesting? So this is the difference between running a normal layout EM simulation where you really can't you know, take into account the effects of diodes, capacitor, resistors. And when you run using circuit EM excitation, uh, you could see a fully loaded PCB performance or antenna system performance, including diode, transistors, and any other discrete component you have used. So that's one part of the tutorial. Hope you like this feature and it will be very useful uh, for you in your work. Just quickly uh, before we wrap up this video, uh, just a quick bit upon when you have you know elements like diodes and you would like to do modeling of the diode, this example also have this folder here called package die. So we do have a diode which is HSMP389B diode. And this is like a very old diode which is um, you know, originally manufactured by HP. Then it came to Agilent and from Agilent it went out to Avago and then eventually Broadcom. But this model is currently obsoleted. So if you want to buy this part, you don't get this part. But I mean, just to illustrate this example, so these diode data sheets usually will have, you know, various configuration because same diode can be available in various package, uh, you know, formats and then all the different, you know, use model configuration. And it will also give you certain characteristics depending upon which package you are using and rest of the parameters here. And these parameters could be utilized in our circuit level modeling. And some data sheets even give you the package related details and what you know, uh, configuration to, to use in your circuit design. Now in ADS, what we have done here in this example, we do have a die model. So if you open up in a schematic, you have a diode symbol, and this diode symbol is calling diode EM1 model or diode M1 model, which is having certain characteristics defined, and that's the model card 
based on your data sheet or you know when they provided information you can feed in so this model is the actual diode parameters and this model is called by this diode symbol and then we have rest of the electronics um, you know surrounding that diode now how to get these models if you're doing your own diode modeling you are using some other vendor you can go to library palette here called devices diodes and in this diode you can either take a pin diode or a pn junction diode so this diode is only you know what we call as a schematic symbol and it will always call a specific model and here is a model card which you can place on your design and then you can link this diode with this model by changing the name appropriately like this and now this model card depending upon what all parameters you have although it may have 100 150 parameters but whatever parameter you have you can enter um, and if you are not clear what parameter it is if you click on that parameter you get the details here if you need further information feel free to click on this help and it will open the documentation page for more clarity and more details and you can get through some of the mathematics behind some of these equations which you might end up implementing yourself or if you want to use some default uh, parameters here right so using these two um, you know model we do have a model which is representing the die and you can refer it's a two port model now if you're using a die model in your PCB that's fine but usually for diodes or even for transistors we don't use a die model these dies get packaged into you know some sort of packages right so here is another design where we are using the same die model and if we push inside there's the same sub circuit we talked about so this die model now has this lc network which is basically the package model which could be provided to you by vendor because if you are using going to use the package part for your simulation purpose it doesn't make too much of sense to use a die model because then you will miss all these inductor resistor capacitors which is basically going to provide package parasitics and for high frequencies sometimes this can be very very important now once you have these models in place um, you know i just created a very simple test bench here and in this test bench i just drag and drop this package model and you can see it's a package model and if i push in it's the same sub network we were talking about just now and the the second terminal is just simply ground the actual diode terminals are these two and i set up a dc voltage uh, with a variable v in and in this dc simulator i'm sweeping v in from 0 to 5 volt with a 0.1 volt increment and at the output of diode i just connected a current probe with certain name and then you know put a 50 ohm to ground there and we were when we run this dc um, you know iv sweep i can plot i probe and i just divided by 1 e minus 3 to normalize the y axis to milliampere and now you can see classical diode iv characteristics at around you know 0.7 volts at the at the dc supply you can see the current start to increase and that's how your diode it gets forward biased and you start to have conduction that's how to do a very simple diode modeling in ads for your work and then eventually using that diode model into your antenna system design all right so that's all for this tutorial video i hope you like the content presented and it will be very useful for your work if you are doing polarization switchable antenna or smart antennas and, and related applications so again don't forget to subscribe to my channel and you know hit the like button if you like the content presented and feel free to share the link with your friends and colleagues and post it on any forums you are a member of thanks a lot for your time and attention